Today we read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. The Apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this cycling tree, Be rooted up and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keep sheep, keeping sheep say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down at the table? Will you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me and gird yourself and serve me till I eat and drink and afterward you shall eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that is commanded you, say we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. This is the reading of the word. Thanks to you, God. <laughs> Increase our faith. Increase our faith. If you are Lord, make our faith bigger. Is that all we want? I mean, hello. Why would we put forth any effort? God can do all things, is all things, and, and can command the waters to retreat from the seas. Why could God not increase our faith? <laughs> I mean, it's a simple request. Increase our faith. Make us more faithful. The only problem with such a request, and this is what Jesus points out to the apostles, is all you need is faith as small as a mustard seed. And mustard seeds, my friends, are like microscopic. You can see the penny up there. That's to give you a perception of how small a mustard seed is. And you know, sometimes I feel as if this scripture is a misnomer. Because we, in our historic understanding of faith, have taken it to where, oh, you just don't have enough faith. You don't believe enough. And it can cause a lot of guilt of things that are beyond our control in life. Where some well-meaning person says, well, you know, if you just believed enough, it'll come true. Sometimes you want to take the Bible and throw it at them. Because sometimes it's not what we need to hear, but sometimes it is. Sometimes we need to hear that all we need is a little bit of faith and we can move mountains. ourselves and a little bit of faith in God. And perhaps that's where the break, the disconnect is, is that we either have such great faith in God and yet we put such little faith in ourselves that we have been gifted by God to accomplish so much. I mean, if we can believe that God does and do, will do all things, and yet we don't believe that with God we can do all things. And that's a struggle 
of us is a dichotomy of faith. It's a high and a low and an understanding of how we come together as a people of God. Because the other part of this scripture is that we've got the tools already. Being satisfied with where we are. That doesn't dissolve ourselves from challenging us as people of faith. But it does call into question that sometimes we look on the other side of the fence and see that oh so green grass and don't realize that we have to water our own for it to be as green. <coughs> we want it to be given to us instead of putting forth the effort to do it ourselves. You know, every year at Christmas, we make a list. I'm sorry, talking about Christmas, it's October, you've seen the advertisements out, too bad. Every year at Christmas, though, we make a list of the things that we want, or things that we need. The older I've gotten, the more practical this list has become. Last year, it was pots and pans and a knife set. Go adulting. And we drop those hints to our parents. I mean, I still do. I don't know about you all. Or we drop those hints to our spouse or a friend or, or whatsoever with the hope that, that they will get it for us so then I don't have to get it myself. Don't hide your faces in shame. It is a completely acceptable way of getting things. But I sometimes wonder if that's how we view our faith. Kind of like Christmas morning. Oh, you know, God will give it to us and I'll open that gift. And, yes, this is just what I needed. I really needed that new 700 count sheet set. If you don't get 700 thread count sheets, you're not sleeping on good stuff, friends. Just saying. But I don't want to buy it myself because those things are like $90. And I got four kids to feed, so a little too much for me. So can you give it to me? I don't want to put forth the effort and put aside, you know, $15 here and $15 there and save up for that set myself. Instead, it would be much easier if someone gave it to me for Christmas. That's what we do. I don't know whether it's instinctive, part of our sight, part of just the reality, or part of what we've been taught to do. But we have an expectation of things being given. And so we struggle against that rhetoric. We struggle against it in all realms of our life, not just our faith, but our faith, my friends, is the one place where we should not struggle. We've been given salvation through the death of Christ. And yet too often we're expecting a new package, a new way of seeing it. Too often we go, oh Lord, increase our faith. And yet every single year we go through the same cycle over and over and over again where we celebrate Advent and Christmas and Easter and Pentecost and Lent and all the other things leading up to the days of importance as the people of God. And it seems like each time we go through those different seasons, we're like, oh Lord, increase our faith. Give us some revelation that makes it better. 
We walk through the doors on Sunday and we want to be fed. Well, I've got plenty of bread on the table for once. But Sunday morning is not enough to sustain us through the rest of the week. <coughs> We talked about it this morning that most often throughout our lives we hear 52 scriptures a year. 52 little pericopes of scripture. Five, ten verses. Oftentimes repeated year after year after year unless you have a creative minister who goes outside of the lecture. our faith. Christ has said over and over again, the tools are in front of you. Use them. Our faith as given by the Lord can be as small as a mustard seed, but then all we have to do is take it and use it and too often, we have this expectation of, oh wait, it's just too darn hard. I mean, it's really hard to pray before every meal. To give thanks for what we've been given. It's too hard to read, you know, your Bible every day because... Shoot, there's only 24 hours. And a good, I'm going to hope, eight of them is taken up in sleep. And then another eight in work. And about three in eating, hopefully. So it's 16, 19. You know, you only have five hours to do what you want. And you have kids. <laughs>
there are now, from the time of Christ to now, there are disciples in all the nations. Not all of them having the same rights and freedom that we do. Not all of them able to worship openly. But we've been given this because it is what has been commanded of us. And yet we still want more. Not realizing that that small kernel, that small seed is enough. Perhaps instead of increase our faith, we should be saying, Lord, increase our patience. Increase our understanding. Increase our willingness to go forth and do your word. Perhaps that's the answer to the question. So you increase our faith, Lord, well, the Lord says, go and do as I have commanded you. And maybe it's not increasing your faith, but increasing our realization of our faith. Because don't you find it easier when you've been at camp or done something spiritual for a little while or taken a challenge of Lent and, and read your Bible every day that it becomes a habit? And it's easier and easier to do and you feel a sense of loss when it's gone away. If you've not, I totally challenge you to find a spiritual discipline, whether it is as simple as saying a prayer before bed or praying before your meal or opening your Bible and reading just a chapter a day. We've been given all of these tools in front of us to increase our faith. 